I am excited as we continue to sit with 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2, and we're looking at the story of Hannah. And the overarching theme of, of Hannah's story is about bitterness because of her barrenness. That's really what it is, because her heart's desire was to give Elkanah a son. And year after year after year, that did not happen. And we talked about barrenness in our own lives and how do we be faithful to where God has placed us in spite of our barrenness? And how do we allow ourselves to see the blessings all around us in our lives in spite of our perceived barrenness? And we added the word perceived because if we're honest and we think about our lives, God has given us everything that we need in order to live a life that glorifies him. Everything that we need. The scripture reminds us of that. And if we're honest and we look around our lives, we are so abundantly blessed. And so that barrenness is perceived because we have truly everything that we need. But this week, I want us to talk about Panina. In fact, it came up in our conference call last week. Panina was Hannah's rival. And she provoked Hannah. She reminded her that she couldn't give Elkanah any children. And I don't believe that Hannah needed anyone to remind her <laughs> that she couldn't bear a son, a child for Elkanah. But for some reason, Panina thought it was her job to provoke her. And I wonder if we have Paninas in our lives that push all the wrong buttons, that basically annoys us and, and, and tries to provoke us in a way that we have to be very careful not to respond back in the same manner. We all have some Paninas. If you don't have any now, you had one at one point in your life because they're not rare. We all have them. But I don't want us to miss the message about Panina because she's in the beginning of the story. And I think that Hannah is pouring her heart out because of Panina. Panina is pushing her. She's pushing the buttons. She's provoking her. She's reminding her of everything that she does not have. She reminds her of that desire that she wants to give to Elkanah. And so she pushes her, and Hannah's response is that she goes to God. While Pen Penina provokes her, Hannah takes her problem to God. And if you look in the passage in chapter 1, Hannah is not praying about Penina. She's going to the Lord, and she's pouring out her heart, and she's saying, If you give me this son, I will surely give him back to you. Bless me with this child, bless me with this thing, and I will dedicate it back to you. So Penina pushed Hannah to pray and pour her heart out. And there is a lesson for us in that, that we cannot focus on our Peninnas. We have to shift our focus to God. We have to not allow the Peninnas in our lives to distract us from what God is doing, to distract us from God's blessings. And if you think about the way the enemy works, he uses distractions all the time to make certain that we are off our path, to make certain that we miss God and that we miss his purpose. And in the distractions, we start to doubt. And I'm pretty certain that when Hannah was being provoked by Peninnah, that she started to doubt her ability to give Elkanah a child. She started doubting her ability to make what she wanted happen to, in her life. I'm pretty certain that that's what provoked her. And then if you think about the distractions and the doubt, the disappointment that Hannah had to feel year after year after year of not being able to have her blessing fulfilled, to not be able to have her prayers answered. But yet Penina is popping out baby after baby after baby because she has 10 sons that she's given to Elkanah. And then that disappointment, if it sits in long enough, my sisters, it leads to discouragement. See, disappointments are inevitable. Discouragement is a choice. 
The disappointments in life will come. We have to choose how to respond to that. And if we're not careful, we will get discouraged. And that discouragement can lead to depression. And I think that's where Hannah is. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that she was a depressed, downcasted spirit because year after year, she was not seeing the answer to her prayers. And so the enemy uses distractions. If we look in the passage, she couldn't worship. She couldn't eat because she was distracted. And the disappointment that Elkanah felt when he tried to soothe her in verse 8, when he says, am I not worth more than 10 sons? And I've given you double portions. Clearly, I love you. But see, Hannah couldn't see that because she was consumed. And sometimes we so focus on what we don't have that we miss all that we do have. And in this particular lesson this week, Panina was the focus that pushed her. I love that, that she pushed her to pour out her heart to God. And then we see in verses 18 and 19 where there's a shift of Hannah's spirit. As she poured out her heart and Elkanah, you know, was there to support her, but Eli was the one who said, may you find favor with God. And as she prayed and Eli poured into her, I believe that her focus was on God and her spirit was lifted. Because it says in verse 18 how she was then able to eat and she no longer had a downcasted spirit. She shifted her focus. She shifted her focus from her paninas to God. And I want us to do the same thing no matter where we find ourselves today. Whatever situation that we are dealing with in our lives, if there's a panina in the air, in the atmosphere, who's provoking us, who's pushing us. May we shift our focus from that individual or that particular situation and shift it to God. Focus on God and, and everything that he's ever done in your life and the possibilities of what he is doing currently in your life because we know that he can do anything but fail. And if we continue reading the story, we understand that Hannah received exactly what she was praying for. She was blessed with the son, Samuel. We see that, but she had to press in and she had to look up to God. She had to shift her focus. She had to embrace the blessings in her life. Understand that when her spirit was lifted in verse 18, that she had not yet received what she had prayed for. But see, she trusted God. She trusted God. She understood that he was the only one that could bless her. And she knew that she had favor in his eyes and that it would happen. She didn't know when, but she trusted him that it would. I don't know where you find yourself today, but are you trusting God? Are you focusing on your situation and your perceived lack of something? Are you focused on your barrenness or are you focusing on God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to die for our sins so that we could have everlasting life and that while we are waiting for his return, we can live an abundant life. Shift your focus. Don't think about your paninas. And every time they pop up, let them press you in towards our Father. Let them push you toward God so that you pour your heart out the same way Hannah did. Hannah poured out and she was faithful in spite of her barrenness. She started to see the blessings all around her. And she did not allow her paninas to keep her from her God. I want you to do the same. And believe me, I'm talking to myself just like I'm talking to you. But I look forward to our time together tomorrow in prayer. Continue to sit with 1 Samuel chapter 1. There's so much more to talk about. And I look forward to seeing how the Lord is speaking to you through this passage. Be blessed.